Today we are looking at the strategy that Esther, a character in scripture, the strategy that she employed in overcoming the challenges that life threw at her. Many of us must have read or heard about the story of Esther. Okay? How a young Jewish girl named Esther rose from obscurity to become the queen of uh, the then world, Medo Persia. How she was challenged by a very wicked government official, and you know, uh, who was bent on destroying her, and how she, as a queen of Shushan, and you know, endangered her life to be able to appear before the king when it was not authorized or when it was not proper, when it was not uh, the right time to appear. So this is the story of Esther. Many of us have heard the story. We have actually seen the movie about Esther. You know. So it's a very important, yeah, it's a very, very interesting character in scripture. And today we are looking at how she was able to overcome the challenges that life threw at her at every turn. So we'll pick up the story from Esther chapter 1, reading from verse number 1. Esther chapter 1, we're reading from verse number 1. <clears throat> and it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This was the Ahasuerus who reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. In those days, when King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the citadel, and the third year of his reign, he made a feast for all his officials and servants, the power of Media, of Media, uh, of the powers of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the province being before him. And when this and when these days were completed, the king made a feast lasting seven days for all the people who were present in Shushan, the citadel from great to small in the court of the garden of the king's palace. Verse number 9. When Vashi, Queen Vashi also made a feast of, uh, for the women in the royal palace, which belonged to the king Ahasuerus. Verse number 10. On the, te on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahanum, uh, Mehuman, Bitsa, Habatna, Be uh, Big Bigta, Abagata, Zephyr, and Carcass, seven eunuchs who served in the presence of King Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vachi before him, before the king, wearing her royal crown, in order to show her beauty to the people and the officials, for she was, a, for she was beautiful to behold. But Queen Vachi refused to come at the king's command, brought, uh, at the king's command, brought by his eunuch. Therefore, the king was furious, and his anger burned within him. Verse 15. What shall we do to Queen Vashi according to the law? Because she did not obey the commands of King Ahasuerus brought to her by the eunuch. Verse number 16, the Memkan answered before the king and, and the princes. Queen Vashi was not only wrong, uh, has not only wronged the king, but also all the princes and all the people who are in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. Verse number 19, if it pleases the king, let the royal decree go out from him and let it be recorded in the laws of the Persians and the Medes, so that it shall not be altered, that Vashi shall come no more before King Ahasuerus and let the king give her royal position to another who is better than her, but better than she. Verse number 21. And the, and the reply pleased the king and princes. And the king did according to the word of uh, Memukan. Now, this is the scripture trying to give us an overview of what was going on in Shushan at that time. The Bible is simply telling us that King Ahasuerus was, you know, throwing a very big party. And when he threw the big party, he invited his wife to appear just to be able to show her off to let people know how beautiful she was. Okay? But his wife, Queen Vashi, refused to attend the party. And the king, that the king, that the, you know, refused to attend the party. And the king was not just angry, the king was pissed. And because he was so pissed, the king now said, okay, this woman, we are going to depose you and then find another person to be able to take a place. This was what was going on in the palace of King Ahasuerus at that time. This was where the one percent were having their good time. And just by, you know, just by way of commentary, you find that one percent did not happen only in America. It's been happening way, way, way back in the days of the Persian and the Medes. But that's just one of those things. So that was what was going on. But on the other side of the city, on the other side of the citadel, there was a group of people again who were there which we will refer to as the 99%. They were living in their own little corner, okay? And life was going in a different direction for them. But if, but if you read that chapter 1 of Esther, the Bible says that after that woman, after that she was deposed, a new, a new queen was to be found. 
And then there was a beauty contest, like a Miss, uh, Miss uh, Shushan at that time, just like we have in Miss America. There was a Miss Shushan contest that was given. They were to find another person who would replace her. And in that case, all the beautiful girls had to show up. And then there was a little girl called Esther, who was now introduced into the picture. The question that we're trying to deal with, we're not talking about how the pageantry went through, but we're trying to see the life of Esther and all the challenges that Esther had to face and how Esther was able to overcome those challenges in the course of, you know, in the course of her life, living in Shushan at that time. So what were the conditions that Esther was living under when this particular thing was happening? What were the challenges that Esther had to go through? What were the things that, were, that she confronted in life that made, that made her to become a prominent character in Scripture? If you look at that verse of the scripture, there are seven things that I want to highlight for us that that uh, that uh, faced and that Esther that Esther faced as challenges in her life. The first thing that you will see is that Esther was faced with the challenge of living in captivity. Esther was faced with challenge of living in captivity. The Bible makes us to understand that the Jews were living in Shushan at that time. Shushan was not their country. Shushan was not their city. This was the same captivity that happened when Nebuchadnezzar took their king, King Joachim. Uh, King Jeconiah, sorry, uh, Nebuchadnezzar took him from Jerusalem at that time and brought him into captivity. So this was the same set of people that were living in captivity, and that was where Esther was, okay? So Esther and the rest of the Jews were living in captivity. That was what was going on there. That was one of the challenges that Esther faced. Esther faced the challenge of living in captivity. Number two, Esther faced the challenge of living as an orphan. If you read Esther chapter 2, reading from verse number 7, the Bible tells us, And Mordecai had brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. In other words, here was a girl who was going to rise up to become the queen of the Media and Persia kingdom. And here was, she was a person who grew up as an orphan, somebody whose father and mother had passed away. So she faced, number one, the challenge of living in captivity. Number two, faced the challenge of living as an orphan. Number three, she had to face the challenge of competing with the very best. The Bible makes us to understand. Esther chapter 2, reading from verse number 2. The Bible said, Then the king's servant who attended to him said, Let beautiful young virgins be sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather all the beautiful young girls to Shushan, the citadel, into the Indian women's quarter, under the custody of Hagar, the king's eunuch, custodian of women, and let beautiful preparation be given them, and let the young women be, uh, who pleases the king be the queen instead of Vashi. In other words, they were going to go through all the 127 provinces that this king was ruling over. They were now going to gather all the beautiful women. They were going to bring them together and one by one, selection will now to be made and they will now be presented to the king one by one. And the person that the king picks out of the myriad of girls that will be showing up will be the queen. In other words, Esther was facing a competition Serious competition because there were a lot of beautiful women in that particular in that in that province. But Esther faced the challenge of competing with the very best. Number four, number four, Esther also faced the challenge of concealing her identity. Esther faced the challenge of concealing her identity. Look at verse number ten, Esther chapter two, reading from verse number ten. The Bible tells us that Esther had not revealed her pe uh, had not revealed her people or family for Mordecai had charged her not to do so why was this because Esther number 1 was supposed to be a slave this is supposed to be living in captivity they were not even qualified to begin to compete but here was the girl who was supposed to be a slave now competing to be the queen of another of 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 of, of the nation number 5 Esther also faced the challenge of a rigorous preparation this when when i read this verse of the scripture i said man when you are going to be the wife of the king at that time, you must really do some work. Look at verse number 12. Esther chapter 2, reading from verse number 12. Esther, each young woman, each young woman's turn came to go into King Ahasuerus after she had completed 12 months of preparation. 12 months of preparation according to the regulation for the women. For those were the days of their preparation appointed. Six months with the oil of ma, six months with perfume and preparation for beautifying women. Can you just imagine? Six months of just having to go through a preparation to show yourself for just a couple of seconds in the presence of a king who might not even recognize that you are there, who might not even acknowledge your presence, who might just wave you off with just, a, with just a, a wave of the hand. And they had to go through rigorous preparation. So Esther not only faced the challenge of living in captivity, she not only faced the challenge of living as an orphan, she not only faced the challenge of competing with the best, she not only faced the challenge of, uh, of concealing identity, she had to face the challenge of a rigorous preparation 
preparation for something she doesn't even she doesn't even know she will win. Number six, Esther also faced the challenge of uh, faced the uh, faced the challenge of living under the threats of annihilation. There was this particular individual who was just pissed with being, you know, with the Jews. Just doesn't like them. And his intention was to be able to wipe them off the face of the earth. Look at verse, Esther chapter 3, reading from verse number 9. This guy called Haman, Haman went to the king to secure permission so that he can destroy them. In verse number 9, the Bible tells us, If it pleases the king, let a decree be written that they be destroyed, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver into the hands of those who do the work to bring it into the king's treasury. In other words, he was going to say, it was, I'm going to bring money to the treasury of the king just to destroy the Jews. And here was a lady who is competing to be the queen of the nation, facing the threat of her people being destroyed. And Finally, Esther faced the challenge of losing her place, of losing her place as a queen, or losing her life just for, you know, for appearing before the king uninvited. If you look at Esther chapter 4, reading from verse number 11, the Bible tells us, the king's servants and, and, and the people of the king's prophets know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court of the king, who has not been called, uh, has, uh, has not, uh, uh, has, he has but one law, put all to death except the one who to whom the king holds out his golden scepter, and he may, that, that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called unto the king's uh, uh, called unto the king for thirty days. In other words, Esther faced the challenge of being killed by the king because she was going to make an appearance even when she was not invited. So these were the challenges that Esther faced and some other ones. The challenge of being, you know, somebody who is lost, you know, somebody who is in captivity, somebody who, who, has no, who, who had no family, who was an orphan, somebody who had to compete, somebody who had to show up where he was, where even she was not even expected to be, somebody who is living under constant threat of being killed by her, by her detractors. That, those were the challenges. And many of us go through similar challenges even today. The question this evening now is that how did Esther survive? Because how Esther survived those conditions might be an indication of us, for us to be able to follow the same strategy to be able to survive. Number one, how did Esther survive? Esther survived the challenges of life by presenting herself for consideration. You see, what does that mean? It simply means that when life has written you off, when life says that you are not qualified, when the whole world says that you cannot be seen, when the whole world puts you in a dark corner where you cannot be identified. The Bible is making us to understand that when that was the case of Esther, Esther refused to stay in that little corner that life has assigned to her. Esther refused to say, I'm, going, I'm not going to be in the back burner. I'm not just going to sit down and let, life, and let life happen without me. I am going to present myself and let somebody else make the decision to tell me that I'm not qualified. I have this friend who always tells me, when there, if there's any job opening that he likes, he will always apply for the job. And he said, his only, and the only rationale behind it is that, he said, I will not do the job of the recruiter for him. I will not disqualify myself. He said, I will put in that information there. I will let them be the one to tell me I am not qualified. He said, a lot of people disqualify themselves in the race of life by not simply presenting themselves. You do not know what they are looking for. You don't know the condition that may exist. You don't know what might happen, you know, in that particular area at that point in time that might work for your favor. Unless you present yourself, you are not going to be able to be in a position to win. Esther presented herself even when she had no chance of winning. If you look at the book of Esther, chapter 2, reading from verse number 7, the Bible says, And Mordecai had brought up had brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his the uncle's uh, daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was lovely and beautiful, and when her father, her mother died, Mordecai took her as her own daughter. Mordecai presented her. Esther was not left behind. Esther was not put here. Esther did not write herself off. Esther did not disqualify herself. She presented herself for consideration, and if you are going to win the battle of life, you must be ready to present yourself. Even when you feel inadequate, even when you feel unqualified, even when you think that you are not supposed to be where you are supposed to be, even when you think that you are not, you don't have what it takes to be able to rule, you say, present yourself and then see what the Lord himself will do. Oh, you cannot be absent and expect to win in life. It's not possible. You cannot, if, unless you compete, you have no chance of winning. You are only you only have a chance of you only have a chance of making it in life if you are there to show yourself and to present yourself. And that's what Esther did. So Esther was able to win the battle of life, number one, by presenting herself for consideration. Number two, 
she was able to win the battles of life by enduring rigorous preparation. One year of showering and burning perfume, showering and putting perfume, showering and putting, you can imagine, no matter how well you like to go to, you like to go to Dillard's or Macy's, you will be tired after one year of continuous shopping. Okay? But this woman had to endure serious preparation, rigorous preparation, 12 months of preparation for something that she was not even sure she was going to get. 12 months of preparation for something that she was not even qualified to apply for. 12 months of preparing for something that she might not even get a second consideration for. But yes, she continued to prepare it. She continued to endure the preparation. And if you are going to win the battle of life, you must be willing to endure rigorous preparation. Because life is going to throw some very difficult things at you. Your job, your career, your family, your relationship, your finances, whatever it is, is going to throw some very serious curveball at you. And unless you are prepared for it, you might not be able to move forward. Success is not an accident. Somebody has said that success is, like, is preparation meeting opportunity. But when you are not prepared, if the opportunity presents itself, you might not be able to take advantage of it. And so, Esther was able to win the battle of her life by enduring rigorous preparation. Number three, Esther was able to win the battles of her life by being discreet, restrained, and careful with information. Many of the people, many of the battles that we lose today is because of the way we live, is because of the way we handle information and the way we carry ourselves. You cannot win when you live a careless life. You cannot, live a, you cannot win when you are not discreet with some information. You cannot win when you are loose with very serious information. If the Lord cannot trust you with secrets of the kingdom, do you think that you think that he's going to release anything new unto you? And that is what, what are, that's what the, some of the things that Esther did. The Bible told us in, in Esther chapter 2 verse 10. It said, Esther had not revealed her people or her family. For Mordecai had charged her not to. In other words, she was a slave. In other words, she was supposed she was she was a Jew. She was not supposed to be competing in this particular thing. But yet she did. And the Bible said that she kept herself, she kept her mouth quiet. I used to joke and tell people that you don't know what you will get away with if you keep your mouth shut. But some of the one of the plague of our community, of our society today, is that people talk too much. If you are going to win the battles of life, you must learn to be discreet, you must learn to be restrained, and you must learn to be careful with information. You cannot be a blabber and succeed. It is very difficult. If in your place of work, your manager cannot trust you with information, if in your place of work, they cannot trust you with a secret, do you think they are going to entrust the leadership responsibility onto you? No, because they don't trust you with that information. Number four. How did Esther win the battles of life? Esther won the battles of her life by sheer determination. Look at Esther chapter five, chapter 4, reading from verse number 15. The Bible says, Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan. Fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, three nights. My mates and I will fast likewise. And so I will go into the king, which is against the law. If I perish, I perish. That particular line became very famous and attributed unto Esther because that is a statement of determination. Esther was determined. Esther purposed, before, purposed in her heart to say, I will go before the king. Regardless of what the danger that my life is facing, I will go before the king. Regardless of the consequence of my action, I will go before the king because I know what is at stake. I know that if I do not do this thing, there is a possibility that not only myself, but my entire people shall be wiped out. If we are going to win the battles of life, we must be determined to win. You must not allow the setbacks of life to be able to hold you back. Those who give up when things are tough, those who release their hold when things are becoming difficult, those people may not be able to see the reality of their success that they're looking for. The man and the woman who will win is the one that is fully determined. Number five, they went, how did Esther win? Esther won by recognizing the power of the almighty God. You will notice in our gathering we always sing this song, I have no power of my own. Because we realize that by the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail. Esther understood that. And that was why Esther said, gather all the people of Shushan together and pray and fast for me. Because she understood that there is a power that is above the power of a normal human being. There is a power that operates in the affairs of man. And that's the power of the almighty God. And when you tap into that power, the chance of success becomes, uh, you know, and, you know, it becomes uh, improved for your own behalf. And Esther knew that. Esther knew that by her, own, by her own power, she can do nothing. She knew that God can change situation for her. And she understands that anybody who is going to win the battles of life must recognize the need 
to align with the Almighty God. Because if you align with the Almighty God, you are sure that things become possible. With you, you might be limited, but with the Almighty God, your chances of your chances of success are greatly improved. Number six, how did uh, how did Esther win? Esther won the battles of her life by employing the help of others. Look at that verse number 15 of Esther chapter 4. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. You can imagine the power of everybody praying together for just one single individual. You can imagine the power of, one, of a corporate prayer concerning one single individual for one single person when she presents herself. And the Bible makes us understand that as soon as she showed up before the king, the king, even the king, contrary to custom, raised the, 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 raised the scepter and welcomed her in. The point I'm making is that if you try to fight the battles of life on your own, the chances of winning are limited. But when you fight with others, when you invite others to join you, when you invite others to assist you, when you accept the help of others, the chances of success is in greatly increased. And that was how Esther was able to win the battles of her life. By employing the, serve, the help of other people. What are we doing alone? Are we trying to fight the battles of life alone? Are we trying to travel alone? Are we trying to do it alone? The Bible makes us to understand that two are better than one. You see, because what? They will get a better reward for their labor. Esther understood that, and she understood that the man or the woman who will win the battles of life is the one that not only solicits, but employs the help of other people. Finally, how did Esther win the battles of her life? Look at that verse of the scripture again. It says, I and my maid will likewise fast, and I will go before the king. Esther understood that there is power in aligning with the Almighty God. Esther understood that there is power in bringing other people to help you. But she understood that it is a greater power when you are able to go on your knees and call upon the Almighty God. She understood that there is even a greater power when you now align that particular prayer with fasting. When you couple it together, you are able to tap into the most powerful force in the universe. The power that shapes and turns the hand of the Almighty God. You are able to tap into that power when you know how to go on your knees and you know how to fast and pray. This is what Esther understood. And Esther was able to pull it together. She said, call. He said, I and my maid will not just pray. We will also fast. We are not asking you to do it alone and we sit back and watch. We are not asking you for your help and we will not lift a finger to do it. But we are asking you to pray and we are going to do the same thing. Yeah. The man and the woman who is going to win the battles of life, yes they might be able to compete. Yes they might be determined. They might know how to call, other for, uh, call on other people, uh, people to help. They might know how to speak the good words of the scripture. But unless they know how to go down on their knees uh, and to be able to back up their prayer with fasting, their progress will be limited. Their success will be limited because the Bible makes us to understand that with God, there is no impossibility. And if you want to move the hand that moves the universe, you must know how to do it on your knees. The question this evening is this. Are we in any form of captivity in any area of our lives? Are we living like orphans? Do we feel like nobody even sees us, nobody cares? That we are isolated in this world. That we have nobody, nobody, who, nobody who cares about how our welfare. Are we concealing our identity because of the fact that we feel diminished or we feel incapable or we feel unqualified? Do we feel that we are constantly living under the onslaught of hell at any point in time? If any of this is going on, this is exactly the same thing that Esther was feeling. Esther was living in captivity. She was, she was an orphan. She, was, she had this constant threat that, yes, her life was going to be destroyed by Haman, and yet she was able to succeed. The question is, are we willing to present ourselves for consideration? Are we willing to show up and say, yes, I'm not going to, re I'm not going to continue to remain in the background? Are we willing to be able to endure the rigorous preparation that comes with the success that life gives to people? Are we willing to be discreet and be very careful with the information that pertains to our lives? Are we willing to be determined? Are we willing to recognize the power of the Almighty God? Are we willing to employ the help of the num numerous people that we come in contact with? Are we willing to be able to go down on our knees and back up our prayers with fasting? Just like Anna did, just like Esther did, just like all the patriarchs and the matriarchs in the scriptures did. Are we willing to do all that? Because only the people who are willing to do that will be able to win the battles that life will throw at them. Yeah. Let's bow our heads as we talk to the Almighty God. And just say, Lord, I'm here, oh God. 
Esther fought and won the battles of her life, and that's why we can read about her today. Esther made sure that she was not left in oblivion. Esther made sure that she presented herself for consideration. Esther was willing to endure rigorous preparation for a second in the presence of a king. Esther was willing to be discreet with her information. She was willing to protect that which pertained unto her. Esther was willing to, return, to, 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 to fight and to be determined to win in her life. Esther was willing to recognize the power of the Almighty God to take, us to, to take her to the next level. She was willing to employ the help of other people and she was willing to fast and pray to see those desires come to pass. The question is, are we willing to see the same thing? Are we willing to do the same thing? Let's talk to the Almighty God and just say, Lord, help me.